guys, Eric Rodebois. This is uh, Five Minutes with Eric. And I just did a video about what happens when you do business with friends or family and you don't have anything in writing with them. You don't have an employment agreement. You don't have an independent contractor agreement. You don't have an operating agreement or a shareholders agreement. You don't have anything. Um, and so watch that video. I kind of, you know, let you know my real feelings. You'd rather be dealing with my corporate team than with my litigation team. So now let's tell a different version of a similar story. So here you go into business and you have the wherewithal. You're like, hey, you know what? We're gonna be 50-50, we're gonna be partners. I know we're good buddies, but let's get something in writing. Let's have a contract. So what is the point of the contract? So if it's an LLC, we call it an operating agreement. If it's just a partnership, we call it a partnership agreement. If it's a corporation, we call it a shareholders agreement. But why even have it in the first place? Because here's my philosophy. If everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing and we're both committed to the success of our business and we're both working hard and we're both compromising and we're both doing all the things we're, and we're both working hard and neither of us has gone off the deep end and neither of us has become an alcoholic and, and quit coming into work and only one of us is working. If everything's going great, then you never need to look at that contract ever again. It's just like when you're married, when you're married and everything's going great, even if you have a prenup, you're not sitting up late at night reading your prenup. Right, and it's the same in business. Now, what happens is people come to me in one of two scenarios. They either come to me because they're starting a business or doing business and they want to have something in writing, or they come to me because they're already in trouble. And so here's what happens. I say, hey, do you have something in writing? And they say, yes, in this scenario. So we pull out that something, and now I'm skipping pages one through eight, mostly. Pages one through eight are talking about how we split the profits, how we make decisions, how we, um, how we successfully run our business. Pages nine through 12 or 15 at the end of the operating agreement, that's the dispute resolution language. I'm looking for things like an arbitration clause, a non-jury clause, dispute resolution clauses in general, which a lot of times people try and get cute and put in these good faith efforts to negotiate. I, the one I looked at today said, good faith effort to reasonably negotiate face-to-face. -face. It included face-to-face. -face. Um, but it didn't say what would happen if you didn't do the good faith effort to negotiate face-to-face. -face. Um, and then we're, we're looking at the specific clause that was saying that if one partner wants to leave, then the company, the company shall have a right of first refusal. But it doesn't say whether or not the person leaving is still considered to be part of the company and so in this case, it's 50-50, so the company can't make any decisions unless it's unanimous, because you know 51 requires both of us. And so the, the, the language of the agreement was unclear. It didn't say, first of all, it didn't say, hey, if I wanna close the company, does that mean I'm leaving the company? It was unclear there. I don't think so, by the way, and we're gonna probably make a good faith argument that just because I wanna close the company doesn't mean I wanna leave the company. Um, so that doesn't trigger that clause. The other side is definitely taking that position. Um, but then also it's unclear on if my guy then gets to participate in the vote, exercising the option. And so let's get to my point. My point is when you're drafting these contracts in the beginning and you're going off on your business adventure, you have to look at it from the frame of reference of what if three to five years from now, I hate my partner and I don't want to be with them anymore and I'm really angry at them. Right? So now we're not looking at the part of the contract where we talk about counting all the money we're gonna make. We look at the part of the contract that's like, how do we solve our problems? How do we do our disputes? If I wanna close the company, what's the procedure for that? If I wanna force him to buy me out, how do we value that, right? Because once we're fighting and we hate each other, we're not making any more deals, right? And a lot of times what I tell people is, we have to resort to litigation to just put more pressure on the other side to get reasonable so that hopefully we can find an off ramp and settle our dispute like we could have done as gentlemen in the beginning, but of course we weren't able to arrive at that, so now we have to get lawyers involved. So when you're reviewing an agreement, and, I, and it's so hard because the frame of reference when you start a business is everything's gonna go great, otherwise why would I be doing this? But you have to train yourself. You're like, listen, I have to look at this from, what if everything goes wrong? I hope it never does. But trust me, you'll be much better prepared if you look at your agreement from the perspective of what if everything goes wrong, because then you'll say, ah, everything goes wrong. We already thought of that. Section 10.5, there's an automatic buyout provision. He is excluded from voting. So essentially the remaining partner has an automatic provision. He can buy him out. We agree on a valuation formula. We can even agree on financing solutions. So there's a lot of things that we have to put our minds into and, and you have to decide. 
is it worth spending 1500 to at least have something in writing in the beginning? Is it probably more worth having spending 5000 to have something really, really good in writing? Or is it worth spending twenty five to 100000 suing your partner once you guys hate each other five years from now? So obviously a lot to unpack here. If you guys have ever been in a partnership dispute, leave a comment below and hopefully I'll be doing a lot more videos like this soon. Thanks.